Today is what is called Christ the King Sunday, if you follow the liturgical calendar. The liturgy, the scripture, and the prayers in our lectionary discusses the second coming of Christ. And traditionally, this Sunday marks the end of the ancient story of creation. And it's a celebration of the upcoming completion of the new creation, the creation that we aspire to live in. The heaven on earth that's spoken of in the Lord's Prayer, where God's will will be done. This is the last Sunday of the lectionary year. There are three years for the lectionary, A, B, and C, and we've just completed year A. Today is the end of a year of learning about the life of Jesus, but also the stories of what came hundreds of years before Jesus and what came immediately after his life. And next Sunday, as we begin Advent, it's the beginning of the retelling of that story told through year B of the lectionary. So another year has passed. So let's take stock of what's been achieved by Herbst UMC over the past year, as well as doing a bit of self-reflection. What ministry has this church been doing in its effort to plant hope, grow faith, and harvest love? In our denominational mission, what have we been doing to create disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? Each year we're reminded of the story of Jesus and how his life ushered in the beginning of a new creation. A creation of new life that involves us taking part in the ministry that he taught. Remember what Jesus told the people who asked what the greatest commandment was? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. When thinking of what our goal as Christians are, our goal as the church, do we remember that the end goal is loving God by following in the ways of Jesus, loving the unloved, feeding the hungry, and caring for the poor of the earth? You know how in business, and sometimes just generally in life, people will ask about a five-year plan or a goal. Where do you want to be in the next five years? It helps to take time to plan what you want to accomplish to know where you're trying to get first, and then take time to figure out the best route. High school seniors like Jonathan are constantly being asked, what's your plan after high school? Or maybe in the case of a farmer, you're thinking about how much or what you're gonna plant the following year. Or maybe you're at the point in life that you're trying to figure out when you'll be able to retire. Or maybe, you might be thinking about when you want to downsize your living arrangements. We know that those type of life moves take planning. But let's remember also that there are many whose goals don't go any further than the end of that day. Five years away isn't even being considered by someone who's just trying to keep from being hungry or thirsty. Five years is not nearly as important as the now for someone trying to find a way to stay warm or dry or safe or sober. And it's easy for us to sit in judgment of people who spend their days just trying to make it to the next day. Well, they must not have worked very hard or they have some kind of defect to not be able to take care of themselves. They made poor choices. But that's not always the case. Having the time to plan is a luxury that not everyone is afforded. Some are put into situations where they must make a quick decision, and maybe they're not always the best decisions or plans. Have you ever heard or read this saying, poor planning on your part 
does not necessitate an emergency on my part. While no one likes it when someone else waits until the last minute and it causes them more work or headaches, that saying kind of seems to be saying that whatever crisis is going on with a person, it's their own fault. But really, as a whole, humanity hasn't done a good job at planning how to get to where they want to go. As we Christians, collectively, around the world, we haven't done a good job of following the plan that Jesus set up for us. Because when I look around, I know that some people may be living like they are in heaven on earth. There are a lot of people who are yet to see that heaven. Now we can point to the passages of scripture that speak of a heaven after this life. And while I do believe in an everlasting life, I don't believe that God meant for us to sit back and wait to see some pearly gates. I can't buy into that. God has goals for us. The New International Version of Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord all that you do, and he will establish your plans. If we commit ourselves to Christ, our decisions and planning will become much more clear. God has more than a five-year plan. The next time we're struggling with which thing to choose from our ever-growing, busy schedules, we should ask, what would Jesus do? Which thing on my list would be what Jesus would prioritize? And not just that, but how can I do these things on my to-do list that would best reflect how Jesus would do them? Not only for our personal lives, but for the life of our church. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection launched us into a new era, one where we are to work together using our strengths, our gifts, to move his mission forward. Personally, I'm grateful for that direction in my life, and it's the purpose that Jesus left all of us with. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said this, he mentioned baptism. Baptism symbolizes new life. So go show the way for others. Jesus' way. It's that life purpose that will lead to changing lives for the better. Not just my life, my family, and friends, but a better life for people who I don't even know sometimes. Maybe I will never get to know those people. We create Jesus followers who create Jesus followers, and so on and so forth. Hopefully out into our community and down through the generations. Over the past year, Herbst has run into some challenges. Looking back since the beginning of the last liturgical year, as a church, we went through a process of discerning which direction we wanted to go, stay United Methodist or not. In December, we had to put our Christmas celebration on hold when the weather didn't cooperate. In January, we offered a health fair to the community again. The weather didn't cooperate very much. In March, we had a bright spot. We witnessed together the baptism of Sarah, and we welcomed Alice and Ty into membership here at Herbst. Next, we went through a tragic split in March, but then things began to turn around. The dark cloud of being disgruntled and disagreeing began to lift, and I was witness to a change. Those who decided to remain banded together in a love for one another, for this church, and I'd like to believe for the concept of a united church in general. Most importantly, I saw the church begin to move forward in ministry. We opened our grounds for the community to use for an Easter egg hunt. We opened our doors 
for seniors on Wednesdays, for crafters on Tuesdays, yogis on Mondays and Thursdays. We sponsored ministry to cancer patients and their caregivers, to single mothers, and to women living in the shelter in Marion. We enjoyed fellowship during our church picnic, during our tenderloin dinner, during um, our walk together to raise awareness and funds for our mission partner, Grant County Cancer Resources. We cared for old friends who could no longer make it to worship. And we welcomed new friends to events like the tie-dye workshop. We celebrated birthdays and anniversaries and even an engagement. And hopefully those who had to say goodbye to loved ones who had people hospitalized, who themselves were hospitalized, or had major life changes, they hopefully felt loved and supported by us. While there were some goodbyes, we also had the joy of welcoming new people into our church. And sometimes we celebrated with those who were welcoming new people into the world. We had new grandchildren and new great-grandchildren. All of this to say that today we celebrate the completion of a year of biblical stories of how the world began, and we celebrate the fact that through Christ, we have direction for the world that's yet to come. And we take ownership for our part in the creation. We're doing the work. We're loving God, and we're loving our neighbors. While a five-year plan might seem like a bit of an overreach at this point, we can certainly plan for tomorrow and understand the need for Christ's church in the world. As Herbst UMC, we have much left to do to help usher in that new life for others. We're also celebrating the hanging of the greens today. The year-long green color of pine, cedar, and fir trees make them a great symbol of everlasting life. Wrap those greens into a wreath and the never-ending circle symbolizes the same. Some churches use holly and ivy as a symbol of the thorns and blood that were on Jesus' crown. Most of our older Christmas traditions have a history behind them that points to Jesus in some way. Even Santa Claus was once referred to as jolly old Saint Nicholas. But the Jesus is the reason for the season, that saying became popular because many people have taken the Christ out of Christmas, right? It's just become a very secular holiday. We basically began anew this year. So let's take time to take stock in our own lives, as well as the life of the church. Let's look at how we spend our time, our resources, and our energy. How can we better love God and love our neighbors? What habits or traditions are getting in the way, and what can we do? Not just to make ourselves feel better, not to make sure that Herbst stays the same, not even to try to prove to God that we're all good Christians. But what's getting in the way of us feeling at peace personally? And what do we see as getting in the way of our church's mission and ministry? And, maybe more importantly, what do we believe is moving this church's mission forward? What are we doing that's igniting people's interests in Christ? Or at least giving us the chance to build relationships with people who can better understand the mission of our ministry through our actions. Through how we are embodying what Paul named the fruits of the Spirit. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
This afternoon, as we work together to transform the sanctuary, and I do hope we'll be working together and not just like little separate families or doing the same thing that we always did. I hope that the youth will be working with the seniors and that people who don't normally work together will be working together and getting to know one another just a little bit better. I hope we can take time to remember that without the life of Jesus Christ, there would not be a Christmas. After multiple sermons on being appreciative, after a holiday that's all about being thankful, let's continue to be grateful for Christ. The Christ whose life taught us what our purpose really is in life. Who inspired a religion that is made up of churches all over the earth? Churches that are on a mission for God. Working toward a creation where everyone feels loved and everyone has enough and knowing that God loves and cares for everyone. Let's pray. Master Creator, we thank you for the stories that have been passed to us generation to generation through thousands of years. We praise you for giving us a way to study and understand your world and your original plan for humanity. We're grateful for another year of having a place to explore scripture with others who want to follow in the ways of Jesus. A community of seekers who are looking to live out your commandments to love God and love our neighbors. As we move into a season of waiting, let us take comfort in your fulfilled promises. You fulfilled your promise of sending a Messiah, and we now look for ways to best fulfill our commitments to you, not aimlessly waiting for the second coming, but purposefully using our lives as a way to continue the work on earth that Jesus began, planting hope, growing faith, and harvesting a love of you and our neighbors as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.